people outside of Ukraine don't necessarily understand about Ukraine is how rich and diverse its cultural history is and how many important non-Ukrainian writers came from the territory of Ukraine. So think about writers who wrote in, in German, in Russian, in Yiddish, in Hebrew, in Polish. Um, you know, I think a great example of that is uh, Sholem Aleichem, the author of the books on which the movie Fiddler on the Roof is based. The musical, the film, world famous. And people often think that this is set in Russia. It's set in the Russian Empire, that's true. But in actual fact, the, the village, the settings are in Ukraine. Man sitzt auf Bazarzeit zwischen Goim mit Same Eisewen, ist man euch gebunden mit alle Balabatin vom Dorf. Jedid Nefesh Averachman, Batyushke Tevel, ist bei Seidos Eiberste von dem Steusel. I think there are lots of instances of this where Ukraine appears in sort of world culture, whether it's in the work of Jewish writers or you know, German language writers, Polish language writers, and we're not necessarily aware of it. You know, so in many senses, The Fiddler on the Roof is about Ukraine. It's a Ukrainian story. A lot of parts of the world are diverse. You get different, you know, groups of people living together, different religions, different ethnicities. But I think Ukraine, especially because it's always been this borderland in between empires, in between nations, it's this kind of crossroads. Cultures overlap, cultures hybridize, uh, cultures compete with one another. You know, languages compete with one another, literatures compete with one another, but they also, they influence each other. Sometimes they, one dominates over the other, um, but there's just really interesting, constant dynamics of cultural flow back and forth. Es ist die Stadt der verwischten Grenzen. Der östlichste Ausläufer der alten kaiserlich und königlichen Welt. The Ukrainian lands were places where writers who were very important for German language literature, Polish language literature, Russian language literature, all worked. Certainly people are aware of the Russian writers. You get those Russian writers who come from Ukraine, like Bulgakov, for example, uh, the sort of writers who come from Odessa, Isaac Babel. Odessa, a city in which it's easy to live, in which it's clear to live. The majority of the population is Jews. В значительной степени их усилиями создалась та атмосфера легкости и ясности, которая окружает Одессу. There's a general interest in the world in, in Russian literature. So people know about that, but I think they're less aware, for example, of you know, the important Polish writers that were working in, uh, in Ukraine. So you know, people like Stanislaw Lem, very important sort of 20th century Polish writer, the author of Solaris, who came from Lviv. Um, Bruno Schultz, you know, sort of one of Europe's great modernist uh, prose stylists who, who came from Western Ukraine. Ukraine is very important as a locus of the construction and building of modern Jewish literatures in Yiddish and in Hebrew. So we have you know, important figures like Shmuel Yosef Agnon, who came from the Western part of Ukraine and won the Nobel Prize. What you see in the 20th century is um, some Jewish writers choosing to write in Ukrainian. And this, I think, really interesting case is Raisa Troyanka. She was from a traditional Jewish family. She left home when she was 15, 16 and joined the circus and, and then met uh, some Ukrainian writers, got involved with them and became a Ukrainian writer herself. You know, those, those competing borderland dynamics that produce these writers who can go one way or the other um, and sometimes make very surprising choices with really, really interesting results. You know, so you get a writer like Deborah Vogel, who's on the one hand very much engaged in this kind of, um, almost kind of national project of, cre of, of facilitating a modern Jewish literature in the Yiddish language, but on the other hand is, is, is very much a very modern, very avant-garde, very sort of cosmopolitan uh, writer. Thor in a wasserig rose hoist verkauft man Tabak und Zigarren. Dem wasserig billigen Reuch veroventen von verlosene Menschen. Und in a gassen eck, da kann man bekommen Kaffee, a brün, kleppig getrank, was kann wie der bläuer Tabakreuch weich zerteln. And she, she's part of a very interesting uh, artistic milieu in Lviv in the interwar period. So we have, for example, this avant-garde group called the Artes Group, which has um, 
painters who are Ukrainian, Polish, Jewish, all participating in the same kind of artistic process. And this is the period, obviously, also when, um, you know, the period of modernism, the period of the avant-garde, when those kind of national dis differences, um, those national paradigms are being left behind a little bit. And writers are starting to transcend those and look at ideas beyond nationalism and national boundaries. It's important, I think, for Ukrainians to understand the really rich, diverse cultural history um, and cultural heritage that they have at their fingertips if they, if they want to, to see it. Um, but I think Ukraine also can teach, you know, teach us all about the fact that to understand cultures, we have to think beyond national boundaries. We have to stop putting up these artificial walls and understand that cultures don't exist in isolation. Looking at Ukraine really allows us to understand that.